Yo, I'm Kept, and I've been playing Shredders basically since this game came out. It's one of my favorite games ever. And today I really want to show some of my techniques and tricks to get this game to look a lot better. And for you to get all of the tricks that you want to get. So this game can feel kind of weird, it can feel kind of floaty. And some of the mechanics can feel like they're bugged if you don't really understand them. And... The worst thing is there isn't a proper and good tutorial in game and there really isn't any in-depth stuff on YouTube either. So all of the shit that I know the ways I play the game is like been collectively figured out by like a lot of good players since the game mouse came out. A lot of techniques to get the flicks looking better, to get flips, get rail tricks that aren't like possible in the like they shouldn't be possible but you can tweak the physics to get them to work stuff like that I'll show you so I hope this will be like a super comprehensive guide for understanding the game mechanics so you can start shredding and practicing the tricks that you want to do too let's go so to start off we'll go into settings uh, in the game one of the things that a lot of people do is you go and uh, change the gravity cause uh, Defaultly it's at 10 which feels really floaty. Some people go all the way up to 15 but I feel like 12.50 or 12.5 is the best all around uh, setting for making the game work as intended but still making it look a lot more uh, realistic. Um, jump height too you can tune that a little bit up but at 12.5 is fine to have it at 1. Uh, it still works as it should with no uh, problem. Um, Another thing I like to do is I go over to gameplay and I go hide free ride HUD. So this will make it so all the points and stuff is hidden. Now starting with a super basic uh, controls. Uh, they're split mostly into left stick and right stick. So left stick is your turning side to side and your upper body if you think about it like that. While right stick is your lower body. So left stick you turn right left. Right stick you skid right. So you will think that was that. But say I want to go faster. I can push left stick forward. And I will get like faster like slow carbs right. If I now skid I will just get like a tiny skid. You can almost not see it. But it is there like a tiny speed check. That is with the long turns holding LS forward. When I pull it back, you get like a really sharp carve. So there's LS back into one side. Now if I pull left stick straight back and skid, I'll do like a straight break. It's not skidding from side to side anymore, it's a straight break, right? So LS is steering and with the speed and where you're holding it forward or backwards that changes uh, the stance and it also changes the way you brake which is helpful if you want to make it really really realistic uh, other than that yeah left stick backwards plus brake on the right stick you'll just do like a straightforward brake okay so when it comes to jumping uh, it's really simple, uh, right 2 or right trigger on Xbox will initiate a jump. So just hold it down and release it when you want to jump. Now there's two settings, there's like a small jump if you barely press it. And then if you hold it and charge up you'll actually jump way higher. Now uh, if you want an even higher jump or if you're a snowboarder and want to simulate it, you also got Ollis and Nollis. So if you hold right trigger, pull right stick back and release, you'll only. So right trigger, right stick back, only, right. Uh, now the opposite of that is an only, which is when you pop off your, the nose of your board. So you simply press right trigger, right stick forward and release. You get an only, which you see is not as high as the only. With the only, you can go like super, super, super high. Uh, Nolly, not as high. So that's uh, 
R2 or right trigger and then right stick forward or backwards. Mm. Now when it comes to setting spins, there's a couple of ways to do it and a couple of speeds you can set. So as I said, um, left stick controls mostly the upper body movements and right stick is the lower body movements. So if I just do like a regular jump and then I move right stick, you can see I can kind of shift it in the air. I can also like kind of put my board upwards, downwards, play around with it. Now if I jump and only press left stick to the left, you'll see my upper body starts to move slightly. So jump, left stick to one of the directions, you can get like a 180, right? Now that's one way to set a spin. But if you want to spin more, you have to preload them. And now it's super important to remember that the controls in this game are super, super sequential. Which means it's almost like an order. You have to do the inputs from 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc, etc. So if you want to set a jumps, uh, jump trick that is preloaded, all of your inputs have to be after pressing the right trigger. So the right trigger gets you to preload, it gets you in the preload stance like this and everything I do with the right trigger and the left trigger right there is preloading a spin, right? So the right trigger will be preloading uh, spins and the left trigger will be preloading flips. So say I want a medium fast uh, spin, what I'll do is I'll press right trigger, release, and as I'm pressing, I'll push right stick to the left. Okay, so right trigger, and as I'm releasing, I'm flicking the right stick the way I want to spin. Okay, so now we'll go over to an even faster spin where you actually preload. Now I'll have to press the right trigger, move the right stick the opposite way, and flick as I'm releasing. So right, left. You can see you get crazy more amount of spin. So flick opposite way first and flick as you're releasing right trigger. Right trigger, flick, release right trigger. Okay. So once you're in the air and spinning, there's a couple of things you can do. You can tuck or you can extend the mid air or you can prepare for landing. So say I spin a quick one and I tuck, the spin is even quicker, right? That is RB. So RB is tucking mid air. If I want to open up to slow down the spin, I can press right trigger in the air and that looks like this. Sorry, uh, I can press right trigger in the air and that looks like this kind of extends and I will stop a lot of flip rotations. Now if I press left trigger in the air that will prepare me for landing. So you see you stop like the whole rotation as soon as I'm pressing like left trigger it like slows down the rotation so much. So I do like a crazy spin, press L T and it stops the rotation. Now mm, if you want to do a quicker spin or slower spin in the air, you can use left stick to kind of control the way the player is or the character is going. So say I want to do a spin counterclockwise, like I'll do what I did before with the wind up. And then as soon as I'm in the air, I press left stick to the left and I'll make him do that spin quicker. I can do the opposite. I can set the same spin and then do it to the right and it'll slow him down, right? So when it comes to setting flips, you set them with a left stick. Now left stick forward and backwards or up and down will be your wildcat and tame dogs. So preload, LS forward, flick. Um, so preload, forward, Flick it back and you'll do a wildcat, right? Now, as you see, that one was kind of slow, which is what they usually are if you only use that stick. So I'll have to use the right 
uh, button or R1 to talk to get it around, right? You can do flips faster, tame dogs and wild cats, by flicking both sticks. Now this is only for tame dogs and wild cats. So instead of flicking LS, you flick both RS and LS, and you'll see that I get a way quicker flip. So both sticks straight forward and back. I can almost double flip on that. Okay, so if you instead uh, use the left stick from right to left, you'll get the front flips and back flips. So that looks like this, preload, opposite way, flick, and you'll get like a front flip, right? Or the other way, you can get a back flip. Mm. Now you see, as I'm in the air, I'm using the tuck and the open to get it around and making it ready for landing, but that's kind of a practice thing, you'll just have to see when should I open up to get like the best trajectory and land as clean as possible. You'll just have to practice that. Now, if I combine those two, say I want to do a cork, I can preload and I can use left stick front to back and then set a spin with right stick. And that will make me do a cork rotation, something like this. You see I opened up there, do not over rotate, that's done with the left trigger. So I can do like a rodeo too with like a back to front on the left stick, right? Something like that. And you can also do other variations where you do both sticks, right to left or left to right. And that looks something like this. That's another kind of, it's more like a flat spin. And then you can go do the sticks towards each other, which is more like a bio. So that is both sticks outside to inside or inside to outside. Mm. Now, there are some other ways to make flips work, which I'll get into later. Now let's just do some basic grabs. Okay, so we're at some bigger jumps right now, and uh, I'll show you the basic techniques of the grabs. Now I won't show you all the grabs, because if you go to the menu, go to controls and tricks, you can see the complete list of all the grabs. Now, what I will show you is what grab slows you down, what grab works as a tuck, which will speed up your spin, what grab actually does nothing to uh, your speed. I'll also show you the best way to get them consistently. So if I hit the jump right here, RB is the tuck button, it's also the button that sets a grab. So say I do RB and then do a stick one way, I'll grab the board, right? Now it could be LB2, LB is a left hand grab and RB is a right hand grab. Now, obviously the way I hold the right stick is going to influence what grab I'm doing, like a Japan right here is uh, to the right and down on the right stick and right button if you're goofy. Now, uh, a trick to getting the grabs super super consistent is to always put the right stick in the position you want before pressing right button because it has a tendency to lock on to the first way you flick right stick and if you flick it slightly off it'll just go for like a different grab especially doing like japan's and methods that are like down and to a side it's super super helpful to do it like that to always get the grab you want now for the grabs that uh, work as a tuck the basic ones, like an Indy or a Melon, they will speed you up. So let's just do like a straight spin and then let's do like an Indy. That works in the same way as if I would tuck. Now let's do that same thing, but with like a method and you'll see what happens to the spin. I'll set the exact same way. And the moment I grab method, it slows down. You see I did a tail on accident there. But let's just do a spin one more time. 
and then do a method it slows it down immediately which is why I try to avoid like methods methodas and uh, maybe like a bloody Dracula too when doing those tricks because it really slows down the rotation now you go grabs like the nose grab and tail grab they won't really slow down the rotation but they won't speed it up either so they're kind of hard to do with uh, really big spins but uh, if you flick hard it's definitely possible uh, grabs like stillfish or indie or melon they'll work like a tuck and they'll actually increase your spin speed like you can do crazy triple corks and stuff easy with those kind of grabs right so for what everybody buys this game for is the butter physics they're amazing okay it's the only game that makes them feel and look so good it's almost like doing them in real life so to initiate a butter you have to press the left trigger and do rs either forwards or backwards and that will initiate a nose press or a tail press mm. If you then use LS from right to left, that will start the spin. So if you want to initiate a butter, that is left trigger, right stick forward, LS to the left, for example, and you will start a butter, right? Or you can take the right stick backwards and you'll start like a tail press and you can butter around that way too. Now you can jump out of butters, of course. So just start the butter and press right trigger or R2 and you will jump. Now, what a lot of people are missing is the butter locking. This means if I'm in a press and then I hold down right trigger or R2, that butter is locked, which means I can hold it and the butter will keep buttering, all I'm holding is the trigger, right? Now that makes you able to set all of your jump tricks without exiting the butter. So say I enter like a nose press and I press RS, I can do a regular jump set and I can do a way bigger spin out. Like that would not be possible if I did not lock that butter. If I only like set the nose butter and popped, I would do like... A 720 maybe a 900 since this thing is huge say I lock the butter lock it flick you see the spin is crazy compared to the first one right uh, now you can set flips out like this as well although this is a little bit harder so lock the butter lock the butter set a flip set and you can do like dubs out which will be impossible if you didn't lock the butter right you can also do like weird stuff like you can do like a tail press front flip or even a tail press double front flip that's doable because I locked the butter okay you can land in butters too so all you have to do is press the left stick down and the right stick up or down and you land in a butter like this <laughs> and you can go up to jump right so this is super useful because you can like set a spin on the top here land in a butter continue the spin for example so that's just setting the butter but in the air and you will land in the butter you can also like jump into a press like this lock it do a front flip out jump into a nose press do like a flip out Right, you, the possibilities are endless. Now, when we're on the bigger jumps, I'll show you some of the slow spins. How to make them look pretty. How to do like cork 3s and cork 5s. Uh, slowly on bigger jumps. So, remember when I said all the controls were super sequential. Now, it's even more important to remember exactly the sequence you do the inputs in so let's say i want to do a really small 360 right if i set that like i would on a small jump i would flick 
and I'm already at the 360 and I'm just trying to open up and hold it and it, oh it's a 540 right so that's not how you do it um, say I come in to jump since this is so big I can only hold left stick to the left and it'll actually be enough momentum to bring me the entire 360 right now if I want it a little bit faster I can do just the right stick so flick left as you're going up and it'll get like a slow 360 this technique though can be used doing corks too and let me show you one other way if you press right stick then hold right to the left then release you'll get like a slow nice spin around so say you want to do a cork 5 really slowly start by holding right trigger holding the inputs you would normally flick and letting go of only right trigger at the end of the jump so preload the jump both sticks down and to the right and at the jump let go you will have a slow spin right super slow super nice if I would have flicked that, I can show you how it would look. It would definitely not be a 540. It would be around there and I have to open up and I crashed, right? So, just hold the sticks, let go only RT and you'll have a nice 540. Now, you can control those in the air as well. So, say I want a cork 360, which everybody wants to do in this game. I will now do the exact same thing. Let go RT first and now hold left stick down. Instead of holding it nowhere, just hold that one down and don't do anything with the right stick. It'll do a cork free. So say I want to do a 7, I'll do this forward because it's a little bit easier. I can do the same kind of set. But now in the air, hold left stick to one of the directions. So like this. And I'll get like an off axis 7. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's try it out with a cork as well. So the same like cork set where you hold it. And then all you have to do is hold left stick the way you want to spin right now put some grab combos onto those and they will look absolutely fantastic Okay, so we are getting into some rails and for this section I'll just assume you know the game's basics, you know how to jump, you know how to spin, you know how to flip. So I'll just focus on the body positioning and the pops on, the pops off, tricks to get 180s and 360s, flips on, flips out, stuff like that. So obviously hitting rails is a bit of a practice thing. Especially getting the trajectory set up to actually land on them and then getting the sequence uh, and timing right to pop swaps and pop stuff out. So obviously really simple jump on slide jump off right. Now spinning on is the same as spinning on a jump except you have to hit the rail which makes it way harder. Set the spin. Now obviously here it's really 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 important to use the right button to use the prepare for landing to get the amount of spin that you want on and off the rail now being on the rail you can nose press and tail press or like blunt slide and the way you do this is using right stick up and down while hitting it so if i hit this one straight on and i do right stick down i'll do like a tail press or a blunt slide up Opposite if I press it forward It'll do like a nose press, right? Hitting it from the side too, it looks really sick You come up like this 
the tail press get off hit the jump with a sick tail grab you get it so spinning on uh, some things to make it way easier set up the trajectory first focus on like going towards the rail where you know you're gonna hit it if you hit it straight then wind up and do the jump as a separate thing like set up wind up jump see i almost failed right there that's because i didn't do the correct lineup in time so line it up set the spin do the spin you get it now for spinning off the rails it's really 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 hard to spin off if you're off balance on the rail like this it really just doesn't wanna i did the jump input didn't want to spin now it can feel like especially to new uh, players that the game is buggy so, like it doesn't want to but it is part of the game mechanics that if you want a quick spin out you have to be bolts which means the rail has to be in between your bindings like this right or it has to be in a 50 50 and on top of the rail like this not like way off to the side barely holding on so just make sure you're in the middle of the rail set the spin as you would and you'll spin out like no problem now the other thing that can stop it is body position so you can see how you can shift it on like this the front of my uh, border is still facing forward which means i really can't set spins that well so if you want to set the max amount of spin make sure you're faced the same way as the board before you start reloading now you can control the upper body with left stick of course so say you land really off balance you can use left stick to correct as long as you have time for that you can spin out no problem again right so for swaps it's the same as spinning off except it's really 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 easy to shoot off from one side that's because on the rail if i hold left stick to the left and jump it will shoot me to the left right if i hold it to the right and jump it will shoot me to the right so the easiest way to get them consistently is to not touch the left stick at all once you're on the rail so i'll jump on the rail not touch left stick only flick right stick and i'll stay pointing right forward now on swaps is even more important to be just bolts like in the middle and then set the spin and you can do free swaps and stuff like that if i was like tail pressing or nose pressing no way i would get out around right now flipping on to you definitely can flip on even to this even though it might not be realistic uh you need to do quick flips so that means a quick flick and then immediately tucking most of the time to get it around so line it up do like a cork and you can flip on now flips off as well is the same thing except the timing is a little harder because you have to like time it to the end of the rail but you can get it on almost every rail now you can straight uh, tame dog and wild caught at on two if you use both sticks to flick like this both sticks forward and backwards just did a wildcat on right you can do that off too now nose butters on the rails they're a bit tricky because they tend to shoot you like a little bit up to the side and you got another two button presses in the sequence to worry about so you have to do left trigger right stick to start the butter then lock the jump with a uh, right trigger and then set your spin if you want a spin so it's a bit of a practice thing but you just have to be more careful with the lineup and you'll butter on in no time right so let's try to do some 180s and 360s now this game has a really big tendency to make the board swerve around to a board slide every time you spin on so you kind of have to trick it to stop it at 180 or 360 and i'm i'm not 100% with this very few people are but the safest way to get a 180 on is to set the jump use only rs to start the spin and then finesse it in with ls so 
Start the spin by only flicking the right stick one way and then doing the last little bit with a shifty and you can get a one on pretty consistent. Now getting 360s or 540s on is even more tricky because you have to set a proper spin and the easiest way to get them is to open and ready for landing with LT just before you hit the rail so that will stop the momentum at the 360. You see I probably won't be able to get this every try some people are better than me there we go second try I just managed to stop it do like a combination of stopping it with left tr uh, trigger and and with uh, the shifting and you will be able to get them to a 360 on or even a 540 right so that's just a big practice thing a lot of people are bad at this so if you're playing like a game of snow or something you'll probably get them out doing a 180 or 360 onto the rail doing them off is just the same as any other spin it really isn't any harder just set the spin and spin off right okay so i've shown you a lot of spin and flip techniques to make them tweak exactly how you want them now before we move on to the drone i'll show you a few more ways to get some accesses that are not meant to be done in the game so the way it's programmed is your natural progression of spins is 1540 per every flip so if you just do a left to right and back to front or front to back set you'll do a cork 5 dub 10 and then you'll continue to a triple 14 I think or 16 and it goes on like that it's like 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 540 plus 540 now there are some ways to get around this to get like a dub 12 or you can get like a dub 9 so the first technique I'll show you is also used if you want like really small cork freeze and that is instead of flicking the sticks each ways you do both sticks diagonally top to bottom so uh, both sticks do a diagonal flip flick and that will give you a pretty cool kangaroo flip or dub nine which is one of my favorite jump tricks to do in the game right now uh, you can also use the same technique to get like a really small cork 360 uh, that was <laughs> way too big air to show that let's try another one like that kind of and that will definitely get your friends out in the game of snow now another technique if you want to do like a double cork 12 or you want to continue the spin is obviously as you're spinning hold the left stick to the side and it will focus on the spins instead of the flips it'll like gravitate towards spinning now if i hold it back or the opposite way it will be way more flippy uh, and if i hold it the opposite way as i set the trick it will slow the spin down and you'll be able to do stuff like that which that would have been a way bigger spin if i didn't uh, try to stop it with left stick going the other way now you can even do like a double cork 7 by doing the dub 9 set and then holding it back you can do like a dub flat 7 which is also not programmed so I think it's cool to get these flip tricks that are not like in the vanilla game like tweak it to the tricks you actually want to do now you can even with that technique and a lot of practice you can even get like a cork 180 which would be impossible i'll pull one up on the screen right now uh, and you can also barely on big jumps get like a double cork 5 or something which if you watch a lot of good skiers and snowboarders you'll see that some crazy guys have done that in real life so it's sick to be able to emulate that in game now the last thing and the most important thing on jumps don't do methods in big spins man so final part of this little tutorial is using the drone now the drone is really 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 helpful uh, 
and the first thing I want to do now is turn the HUD back on so you can see what we are doing mm, go into the drone again there we go now you got a few controls you can fly around with a left and right stick now pressing X or square will spawn you where the drone is so you can spawn whenever or wherever you want going back into the drone uh, Y or triangle gets you out of the drone also into the drone um, uh, X you have a whole build menu where you can place objects in the world I won't go into that right now but it's really sick um, in multiplayer you can teleport to other players you can also lock onto a player and follow him uh, you can make these smiley faces appear with d-pad up i don't know why you would want to do that but <laughs> you can um now the big secret i guess with the drone is holding lb or l1 using the d-pad you can change the position of the sun so you have like a place you want to shred but the, the light isn't getting to it you can use LB or L1 plus D-pad and you'll actually change the sun direction. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. This has been like the most in-depth I've been able to make a basic tutorial. Um, I hope it really helps getting you to figure out some of the like weirder game mechanics. There really isn't a good tutorial out there before this one I think, which is why I wanted to make it. So. When you've seen these tricks, like just try to find something you like, session it, try again, try again, try again, figure out the tricks you like, and I think you can make this game look really, really, really good. So, peace!